What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 3. And you can see the gas grass has finally grown. Uh, it's looking happy. It looks quite cool, I must admit. As much as I'm not a fan of the premise of it, because it doesn't seem to give as much as it takes, uh, it looks cool. Now, I have put the sleepy sleepy, go night night, fly in beds in there for them. I'm not sure if they can use them. Um, but the room is too big anyway. It doesn't count as a farm, therefore they can't use them even if they wanted to, which is why the grooming station as well can't be used. I could shrink the room to make it work, but I couldn't be bothered because it means moving the lamps and that's too complex for just this science experiment that I am doing to try these guys out. So as we move over, there has been a giant rework on the rocket area, and that is that I have started using the rocket loaders. Now I understand how they work. Honestly, I don't know what I was thinking and why I wasn't using these sooner. So all you need is one rocket loader there, one for the fuel, one for the oxidizer. There's one for rad bolts. I'm not sure if I'm going to use that, but I put it there because it just looks cool. And then there's these plugs that go in between. I'm using the insulated ones because I've got insulated walls anyway. There are a few different variants, but... And that means that all you have to do is plumb the oxidizer into the oxidizer one, the, the, the fuel into the fuel one, and as soon as the rocket lands, it gets loaded up. You don't have to have the pipes go into the various different ports. That's massive. I can't believe that it's taken me so long to realize that. I've never really spent a lot of time with the rockets and doing a lot of space travel, as I've mentioned. Although I have got a lot of time in this game, I usually get distracted by other things. So actually going to space and the end game sort of areas, this is all new to me and I'm sciencing it with you. So yeah, I think for those of you that didn't know that, hopefully that's helped you. For those of you that did, they're probably laughing at me. Lol. But still, it's, it's good. So a rocket lands that can take any of those two fuels and boom it fills them up of course remember though if you have a solid oxidizer tank uh, that's not going to work right you need to have the right compatible tank building storage with it now what i'm showing now is some what i class as semi automated liquid sorting so that when a rocket lands with a specific liquid involved more specifically it's going to be chlorine is the only one we're currently farming um it will be sent out of the rocket through the first filter which of course will be polluted water just in case some of the rockets will have polluted water build up so i need to make sure that that is emptied as well to allow the duplicates to use the facilities on the rockets the second one then would be for chlorine because that is the one that we're doing and that is as you can see where i'm plumbing it into and then the third fourth whatever i have after that will be for something else depending on what i do collect or I need to collect. As it stands, I'm not convinced I need to collect any other liquids apart from liquid chlorine. But unless we find a asteroid with what is what the cryofuels that I mentioned, which again I'm not sure you can do that, or even one that has super coolant on it, that'd be cool. But I'm pretty sure that's not a thing because you have to make it. It's not natural. So as it stands now, you do need to put in the gas pipe and the water pipe still. Um, there are liquid and, and gas loaders, but I haven't quite figured out the easiest way of doing them yet. So for me at the minute, I've got a gas pipe going into them as normal. I mean, it's easy because I've moved the actual the, the, the home station, the, the, the command module to the very bottom. Well, other than the engine, but yeah. Um, and the liquid then is the same. In fact, that's even closer because that goes into the bottom of the capsule, whereas the gas goes in the top. You can see the fluorine rocket or fluorine rocket is on its way back already. I don't think, or in fact, I know that setting it just to hold fluorine doesn't work or fluorine. I keep saying fluorine. Um, so it just it collects. Uh, a percentage of everything regardless it seems and then you can see that rocket over there is now scanning out those areas it's stuck in an orbit of another of another asteroid but it's slowly scanning those and we're hoping to find something useful more liquid chlorine there but that's actually further out than the one we're already using for gas gasil 
uh, is is a lot closer and that is what we need anyway so for now we are happy and we haven't found anything that's game changing just yet so as i'm now using rtgs as power and that's radio scope thermoelectric generator thingy basically nuclear um i need a lot more enriched uranium now there was that uranium we got from the planet where the second planet or asteroid number two where the bees were or the beta hives um, but this machine here actually does it for us now it does re release molten uranium but all i'm going to do is build a little storage above it and store the liquid in there it's not that warm to be honest so it's not the end of the world this will then chuck all of the uranium we've got which we've got a good amount of uranium turn that into enriched uranium of course then we need to put that uranium into the rtgs of each rocket now i'm going to be using at least two up to four depending on what power consumption the rocket has uh, per rocket so i think they take 50 kilos and then that lasts 50 cycles for 50 days which is more than enough and it will last forever we've got plenty of uranium to do it i just need this machine to actually do the converting for me it's certainly uh, probably not the most efficient but it's certainly the easiest way of doing it because it's a machine we'll just tell them to dump it and i might even chuck a sweeper next to it a storage container with the uranium in it and then it will be done automatically for us we're not making that many rockets right so it's it's not too taxing i'm pretty sure i'm going to have a lot more enriched uranium than i'm going to need but if i just build it get it set up and then forget about it i don't think i'll ever have to worry about it again so for the liquid i'll just put a platform above with some ladders to it a liquid storage lazy ladders there so i don't have to build them all um, and then the liquid can go in there that i don't require the enriched uranium then it's left over and we're good to go and that's ready to go it looks like it's actually running already you can see a small amount of liquid just went into the canister at the top i've put the storage next to it to try and speed up the process when the guys get to it of course but in the meantime we're good right so looking at the galaxy map you can see that's finally all done over on the left hand side there the northwest that i called it uh, there are some reasonably decent items to collect but i'm not convinced i'm going to need them no liquids that i actually need at the minute that are beneficial to us obviously there is a, another an additional liquid chlorine but we have one closer already uh, and i didn't find any liquid oxygen or liquid hydrogen that would potentially be a much easier way of cheese balling the cryogenics part of it so for now we'll just have to make do with what we've got at least we have uncovered them knowing that the temporal tear is not there so we will now have to look at the south west and southeast of them of the galaxy to see where that does lie once we've got a location we can then look at going through it and beating the game slow progress at the minute because i've basically built three rockets to do specific tasks both scanning and one for artifact collecting i want to try and get the neutronium alloy to make the upgraded command pod obviously um and you need to get relics and un uncover the relics clean off the neutronium and then that is the stuff that you use to turn into the alloy now, although it doesn't look too complicated, you've got three command pods there, all of which need building. And inside them is... I don't know why I had this glitch bug thing. That normally means there's something stuck in that tile, but I'm not sure what it would or could be. It may be where I've deconstructed a pipe. Uh, sometimes with the chain deconstruct mod, it kind of leaves an item from a pipe or a rail kind of inside the the tile even though it should just drop it but anyway um but yeah it means that we've got three of the command pods to build which they are very complex when you think how much is in there or the floor in the piping the gas piping and then the freeze of the power and a lot of wallpaper um it takes time because they have to get the stuff from the main storage which is in our base then travel up through the atmos suit docks and then across and all the way into where the rockets are it's a long way to go i probably could 
I've automated some of the resources that I use a lot to make it easier, but it seems pointless at this stage in the game. So I can just let them do their thing. For you guys, it'll be nice and quick. For me, it's just waiting and having a cup of tea or something while I wait and just see what happens. You can see that all of the command pods are set up the same. Uh, this one's finished and it's got the oxygen going in with a pump there. One of the small pumps that is for removing any carbon dioxide buildup. There is carbon dioxide buildup in this one because it's been used before. And that's what it's for. So all I'm doing is replacing one of the artwork towers with a, a, a micro pump to remove carbon dioxide buildup. Because it's all well and good having oxygen in there. But the carbon dioxide will always take up the bottom because it's heavier and the bed is on the bottom so as soon as you have at least two tiles of carbon dioxide build up they can't use the bed more atmos suits in production which means it will fill up them spots you can see in terms of oxygen as well we've got a decent amount there we're not i'm not worried about running out of oxygen anytime soon that bottom line that's causing a problem is because that room has been shut down those four lines there or the few extras but the, the reason that pipe is all empty is because that's where the polluted oxygen was where we had loads of it and I was cleaning it and then immediately sending it out but that has run out now and we're not liable to get any more anytime soon because the actual polluted oxygen the reason we had so much was because we was ripping it out of the entire asteroid the, the map itself but we're talking micrograms everywhere now so you, there's probably not 50 kilos of it in the entire map so instead we can rip that out which will mean we can then pipe in these two lines here that come from the bottom um, and use any spare oxygen we do have now there are three setups for oxidizers in terms of electrolysis rooms you know that of course there's that massive one at the very bottom of the base that sorts the base out and then the two on the left hand side there that originally were used for the base and for the atmos suits both of them now go into the atmos suits so there's two smallish rooms that are powering the or fueling sorry the atmos suits for oxygen and then the giant room that keeps the base looking good now there shouldn't be any issues apart from obviously duplicates in atmos suits that shouldn't be which is because I turned it off while I sorted it out. Um, and in the main base itself, I'm not worried about running out of oxygen. The only problem is making sure that the carbon dioxide buildup is dealt with so that the bottom few floors don't get clogged up. Now, originally I did have pumps in there doing it automatically, but I changed my mind in the end. Because of the abundance of oxygen, I just opened a small hole in the bottom of the base, which the pressure pushes the carbon dioxide out and replaces it for oxygen. For now, it's working. Uh, if it causes an issue, I'm sure it's something that we can fix easy enough. It's not like we're going to run out of oxygen. It's just the pressures um, fighting to make sure that the bottom floors are still usable for the duplicates. Though, the bottom two floors where the storage is, is all automated anyway. So the only reason the duplicates need to go in there is to actually collect resources that are stored. Anything that is being stored is done automatically by one of, I think, five sweepers we have set up. So there we go. With the rockets completed and sent out, you can see we've got one going southwest, one going southeast, one going to that crashed rocket ship. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to do anything with that or not. I mean, spoiler, it turns out you, you don't. You get relics every three cycles or whatever it is, but nothing else. So other than farming relics... Uh, there doesn't seem any other use to these and there are more crashed rockets or abandoned rockets and satellites on the map uh, we just haven't covered them yet so the one up there in the north was going to collect more fullerene and the, the other two was going to uncover hopefully the temporal shift tier now here is ready for now i've got the fullerene coming in i know i'm going to be making the Technically, I've already got some. I've got two tons of the fullerene in the storage already. You can see that on the resources tab over on the right there. Um, so we can start making now the super coolant. The rooms I've set up are simple. I'm not sure if this is going to be enough yet. We can always extend it should I need to. And I am obviously extending it for the second loop now. 
So as you can see, there are three of the coolers. I'm separating the rooms. So the left-hand room, as you saw, was I highlighted it blue just to visually make it obvious. That was for the liquid oxygen. And then on the right there, you can see the purpley pink. That is for the liquid hydrogen. So this room itself is the cooling room. And there is a thermostatic generator in between the two. You can see I've also implemented an automation for the liquid. So as they go round and through that room to turn it into a cryo chamber effectively, if the coolant, which will be super coolant, is cold enough, it will skip the coolers. If it's if it's too warm, it will go through the coolers. Simple. Each obviously tier is 10 degrees, so to go through the coolers, it, it will reduce the liquid by 30 degrees each time. Now, both rooms are going to be very different. The left-hand room, which is the oxygen, only needs to get down to around negative 180 to 185 degrees to turn the, the, the oxygen that will be in that chamber into liquid. The one on the right, however, for the hydrogen needs to be significantly colder. Down to about 260 below, negative 260 degrees, and then keep it there. Once it's a liquid, pumping it out and storing it in a liquid chamber on the surface in, in, an, in a vacuum is the easiest way to do it, or you're just pumping energy constantly into it. Now, here is a very simple addition. So what I'm going to have is a closed loop that just goes past the generators, the coolers, up to this top section here, and this will hopefully take some of that heat out and cool down even more whether it's going to be efficient enough is another question and for those of you that do like spoilers uh, it, it's not going to be good enough it needs to be quite a bit bigger than that small section there instead of using two or three of the thermostatic generators to cool it you're going to need probably five to six Power wise, we're actually going to start relying on hydrogen. We are running out of, or we have run out of, the carbon that we're using, the refined carbon, um, because obviously the amount of oil we've got is limited now to the geysers. We haven't got a backup. So they're only running when there's enough oil there to run, which means the refined carbon that's created from the oil well process has been reduced dramatically. We did have at one point. 300 tons but yeah we're basically down to zero now this is annoying where we get meteors that drop items on things and stop them working i appreciate when they're actually buried but the interplanetary machine on there on the right it's not the, the bit that fires isn't buried but i could put a roof on it apart from a small gap for the interplanetary thing to fire the rest of it and the rad bolt storage doesn't actually need to be uh, space exposure it doesn't need line of sight so here we just get in a relic from the crash spaceship as i mentioned and i believe it obviously like i say once you've got it you then have to wait a couple of cycles for it to redo it and it's just rinse and repeat so it's kind of a infinite artifact collector uh, is what that seems to be and if i am wrong please do let me know i, I feel like when I went over there, that there was a chance of getting like a free duplicate or maybe having some of the rocket to bring back with me or I don't know. Or a quest where you send it resources, fuel or whatever and you can bring it back and it's a free rocket. Not sure what I was... That, well, that's what I was expecting but it's nothing like that. It just seems to be an infinite artifact resource. An off subject from space stuff. Um, the liquid chambers, you can see we're actually, the, the, the clean water has finally run out. We've caught up with all of the, what the guys are doing. The polluted water is getting there as well. The salt water, not so much because we're only using that for crops, for the lettuces. I'm not converting that into clean water. But you can see there's three tanks that are full. That's 300,000 litres of clean water there. We then have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. So 11 plus 3, of course, is 14. So that's 1.4 million litres of clean water stored currently. As I said, we are not running out of water anytime soon. Now, the cryo chamber, or at least the cryo chambers, are, are done for now. Um, the additional cooling at the top is almost done. And then all we need to do is build in a storage uh, and a bottle emptier for where the super coolant will be emptied and then can be easily pumped in. You can see the pipes there coming out. They're also to allow me to plumb it in for 
getting oxygen in here in the left one and hydrogen in the right one now we have plenty stored so i'm not too worried about that but you need to be careful and remember that the gas and the liquid is very different in terms of density so a full tank a uh, gas tank stored of gas which is 5000 kilograms of gas is not going to be 5000 kilograms of liquid in fact not even close you'll probably get about two tiles of liquid from 5000 kilograms of gas so note to self if you think you've got a lot of something when you're actually converting it cryofuel especially when you convert it to a liquid it significantly drops and we will find that out as we get there now i've got that pump set up so that pump there that i've just put down will be to suck up the super coolant when we have that that will be dropped off in there by the bottle emptier sucked up and pushed into each of those loops there's two single loops obviously for both of the cryofuels at the minute the gas the hydrogen is coming in from the hydrogen vents just making sure that, that has five kilos in there the, the more hydrogen you've got the better transfer of the heat and the better hopefully the electrostatic thermal generator should be able to take that heat away without these things exploding on me the heat as well is apparent to, to what liquid you're using so if i use water very risky the temperatures dealt with there it's bound to turn into steam but i'll probably use water for the internal loop that goes out the top for now and if i struggle i can upgrade it to something that's reliable like petroleum because petroleum doesn't gas out from a liquid until about 500 degrees 470 500 degrees i think it is um so at least then it will be able to handle the extreme pressures and take that heat away without breaking into anything but we are going to have to wait for another episode to see that because we are at time now so thank you very much for watching if you like the video please click like any comments are welcome as always don't forget to like if you liked and subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss out again thank you for watching take care goodbye